Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and talk about how you might use them in your current campaigns. This week, I'm going to take a look at a new Dungeons & Dragons product done in a retro style and based off the hit Netflix series, Stranger Things. This will be both an unboxing so you can get an idea of what's included and then a review of the contents. So let's get started, shall we? Spoiler warning, I will be showing pictures of some maps and pages of the included module, so you might want to stop the video when I get to that part if you plan on playing it. For those not in the know, Stranger Things is a hit TV show streaming on Netflix. The series takes its inspiration from a variety of 1980s pop culture, most notably Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, and Stephen King. There are even scenes in the show that are direct homages to such works as E.T., Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Firestarter, Alien, Altered States, and many, many more. The show has been a major hit for Netflix, and this summer will premiere its third season. In the first episode of the first season, the kids of the show, Dustin, Lucas, Will, and Mike, are playing a game of Dungeons & Dragons. Mike is the dungeon master, and the encounters and settings include such monsters as troglodytes and a demogorgon. Though apparently not the demogorgon from the monster manual, there is an alternate dimension called the Upside Down that the characters find themselves in, and these Dungeons and Dragons elements prove analogous and important to the strange things the kids encounter during the series. It is also these Dungeons and Dragons elements, along with the popularity of the show, that many, along with the streaming of D&D shows like Critical Row, attribute to the return of Dungeons & Dragons to mainstream consciousness and renewed popularity. This box set takes these elements and uses them as the basis for this tie-in release. This is a starter set and includes the 5th edition D&D basic rules minus the rules on character creation. Two Demogorgon miniatures, one painted, one not. A complete adventure, The Hunt for the Thessal Hydra, based on the one Mike Wheeler was running in the TV series, and five pre-generated characters. Stranger Things begins in 1983, so appropriately the kids in the show are seen using the Frank Menser David Cook edition of the game, which came out that year. Mike is seen paging through his notebook, and we are even given this shot from it. That's the back cover of the Isle of Dread on the left, and obviously the David Cook edition of the Expert set on the right. Thus, in homage, this starter set uses a variation of the Menser basic cover art with Larry Elmore's dragon artwork replaced with the Demogorgon about to attack one of the Stranger Things characters. The box is given that well-used distress look to further play on the nostalgia. Peeking through the window of the box is one of the two included Demogorgon miniature figures. Upon opening the box, we have the two figures, one somewhat painted and the other not, and a set of polyhedral dice minus the percentile D10. This appears to be the exact set from the original starter set. Of the things I was a bit disappointed in, the Demogorgon miniatures was one of them. I expected rigid plastic, but these things are made of this soft, rubbery stuff, and as you can see, it bends very easily. No matter, I'll paint them up and put them to good use. Next, we have the D&D rulebook. It's rather functional and basically mimics the rulebook from the starter set, though I have to say it is a much higher quality than the one included in the original starter set. The pages are stitched together rather than stapled. They are of a thicker, much more rugged variety than the thin pages in the original starter set. Artwork inside is basically pictures from the TV show. There's a decent list of spells and magic items, and the monsters included are there to reflect the requirements of the included adventure. The highlight of this box set is undoubtedly the included adventure, and for those of us who are veterans of the game, we'll have the most interest and appreciation for. 
The module's design style is made to mimic how a young Dungeons & Dragons player might write out their homebrew adventure. Like it's actually Mike Wheeler's notebook, and it's titled The Hunt for the Thessal Hydra, a campaign by Mike Wheeler. The pages are done up like loose leaf paper with graph paper maps taped inside. The maps are just great and certainly look like they could have been drawn by an artistically inclined 14-year-old. How many of us made maps like this when we first started playing back then, huh? There's also some interesting colored pencils, artwork, sprinkled in to complete the illusion. The adventure is actually an upfront, smartly designed monster hunt that can be started and finished in about one session, maybe two, if the players are keen for some role playing and there are several encounters where good role playing will come in handy in order to complete the adventure successfully. Beneath the adventure module are five third level pre generated characters. All the rules on how to play the characters are printed on the character sheets. On the back are the rules for leveling the characters all the way up to fifth level. As far as the Demogorgon goes, it's fine. As I said, I'm a bit disappointed in the quality of the plastic, but certainly the thing won't break easily. The paint job of the one such that it is will have to be redone, as really it's just a dab of red in the maw of the beast and a little red wash. How well the thing takes to actual paint remains to be seen. While certainly I understand why this Stranger Things tie-in used the actual creature from the show as the Demogorgon instead of that really cool grenadier metal miniature Mike used in his game on the show, I'm inclined to make the switch myself. Back in 2016 when the series first premiered, I ordered the Grenadier Demogorgon from a seller on eBay which also included the Thessal Hydra. It was only $50 including shipping coming from overseas for both miniatures. Yeah, I know. Only. This is the crazy things this grognard spends his money on. Anyway, here's mine all painted up. I think when I run my version of this module, I might be inclined to use this instead. The rulebook is of a higher quality than the one from the original starter set. Thicker pages, stitch binding, and makes for a great introduction to the 5th edition of the game for new players. The 3rd level pre-generated characters provided are certainly just fine for the adventure included. A bard, a cleric, a paladin, a ranger, and a wizard. All the rules, including abilities to 5th level on how to play each of the characters is provided on the character sheets. This might make for a great one-shot adventure at a convention. There's enough room in the game box left over for a DM screen and a few more miniatures. The dice provided are nice, nothing spectacular, but certainly serviceable for the task at hand. It would have been kind of cute to include some hard plastic dice with a crayon to stay in theme with the retro vibe, but hey, that's me. Finally, let's talk about the included adventure hunt for the Thessal Hydra. This is a very well done, good old fashioned monster hunt scenario in my opinion. Great for new players, but it offers enough challenges and role playing opportunities that I think even veterans of the game would enjoy playing it. The story begins with the players meeting with the ruler of a small domain in a lonely stretch of mountains, Sir Tristan. Sir Tristan is an old friend and ally who has sponsored the characters in the past. He asks them to hunt down and kill a terrible monster called a Thessal Hydra, a terrible beast with eight heads surrounding a gaping maw that drips acid, its tail ending in a pair of sharp pinchers. Sir Tristan will offer the characters gold and equip them with some nice magic items to help them along on their quest. Along the way, they meet several travelers on the road, a merchant that offers them apples, a priest, a woodcutter, and a farmer that give them clues as to where to find the beast, which was last seen going into some creaky caves occupied by unfriendly troglodytes. Once they find the caves, they will encounter troglodytes, of course, but cleverly, the module provides a way for the characters to avoid a fight. The cave leads to the cursed labyrinth, a labyrinth in a pocket dimension whose hallways twist, turn, and change once you enter it. A wonderful retro throwback here, as the labyrinth's halls are randomly determined. There are several interesting encounters and traps while within. There, they meet the Lost Knight, and if they can solve two of his riddles, he shows the characters a way that will allow them to further track the Thessal Hydra. 
This leads them to another dimension, a shadow reflection of our own world called the Upside Down, a creepy and mysterious realm that is forever cold with decrepit duplicates of places in the real world. There they encounter the proud princess, who is on a quest of her own, but has information that can further the characters along. She tells them about a special plant that the Thessalhydra that the Thessalhydra uses to teleport to its lair. Essentially, the creature uses the cursed labyrinth to port to the upside down, and then from there it teleports to its lair, which is why Sir Tristan's men have never been able to successfully track it. The catch is, to activate the magic, you need the blood of a monstrosity. While the Thessalhydra is using its own blood as it is a monstrosity, it's not currently in the upside down. The Proud Princess tells the character of another monstrosity that currently stalks the area, the Demogorgon. They can use its blood to activate the plant's magic and teleport to the Thessalhydra's lair. After their encounter with the Proud Princess, the characters must either kill the Demogorgon or wound it enough to get a vial of its blood to teleport back to their home dimension and the object of their quest, a final confrontation with the dreaded Thessalhydra. As you can see, there are many opportunities for role-playing provided in this setup, but for the most part, the adventure is straightforward and linear, perfect for a group of novice players. Maps for the Troglodyte Lair and the Thessalhydra Lair are provided, and for me, there are several modifications to this scenario that immediately come to mind in order to shake up the linear track of the adventure. First of all, there are no monster statistics in the module itself. The reader is referred to the included rulebook. If you're feeling enterprising, there's no reason why you couldn't run this using the D&D rule cyclopedia or a retro clone. Now, according to the TV show, Mike Wheeler was using the Menser Cook version of the rules, but the Thessalhydra first appeared in Monster Manual 2 for the AD&D game, certainly not coincidentally, released in 1983. So, it seems that he was running a Frankenstein game using AD&D and basic D&D which makes this a great module to run using Advanced Labyrinth Lord. In addition, you can certainly add to and expand the module, the most obvious one being to add more to the encounters in the Upside Down. My personal choice here would be to have the characters track the Demogorgon to an Upside Down version of Sir Tristan's castle. Tristan's guards are replaced with armored undead skeletons and other dungeon horrors, traps, and puzzles all culminating in a fight with the Demogorgon in its lair. This would be all the more effective if, at the start of the adventure, you take the time to describe Sir Tristan's stronghold, the banners hanging proudly as they enter over the drawbridge. You could have the drawbridge over a moat with crystal clear water. Describe the chandeliers and candelabras and the regal splendor of the place. Then, when they find the upside-down version, you can talk about how the banners hang torn and tattered, billowing in the chilled air, the rusty candelabras and long, dim wall sconces, the overall decrepit and torn aspect of the place, and how the moat's waters are black and inky, and something vile and eel-like swims within. The drawbridge is now rickety and unstable-looking, and the water it crosses is a black, inky, deep abyss. The module is only 12 pages long, and I was able to read it in about 30 minutes. It's written in a very straightforward style, which makes this a great module for the first-time DM to run. An experienced DM might run this as an introduction to new players at a convention, or it can easily be integrated to an already existing campaign. I pre-ordered mine in February for $24.99, and its release date was in May, so I'm a bit surprised I got it so early. Currently, Amazon is showing it is out of stock, but Barnes & Noble still shows it's available for pre-order as of this video, so you might be able to get it there or check your friendly local game store. So, is this worth the $24.99 price tag? Component-wise, I'd say yes. It's a complete game with a great first-time adventure module that can be run by a group of inexperienced players. This might also be appealing to fans of the TV series Stranger Things, those interested in retro gaming, and of course, fans of Dungeons & Dragons. If you're not one of those folks, um, why are you watching this video? So, using my D20 evaluation scale, this is how the numbers stack up. 
Presentation-wise, this is very well done. The rules have been greatly cleaned up from the starter set, and the books are printed on high-quality paper. Everything is easy to read and easy to find. The included module gives a solid example on how to run a homebrew adventure and is easy to follow. There's really nothing for me to complain about here, and it's clear a lot of thought went into this tie-in, so natural 20. For style, the retro box, the old school homebrew, the look of included adventure are well thought out. My one nit here is the Demogorgon miniatures. The rubbery plastic, in my opinion, was a poor choice and serves as a disappointment for what should be one of the highlights of this product, so a 13. Finally, for value, there is a lot to consider here. The included module, while very good, will only be good for one, maybe two game sessions, unlike the very excellent adventure module from the original starter set, The Lost Minds of Fandelver, which took characters from levels 1 to 5 and was good for many, many game sessions. So while the included adventure is very good, it is also very short, which greatly limits the value of the starter rules book and the set itself. However, the module does provide a solid example on how to create your own adventures, and the spells and monsters in the rulebook should be good for the Neophyte DM to create more homebrew adventures of their own. The character sheets do provide leveling information to level 5, so for value, I will give it a 13. Thus, the overall rating for the Dungeons & Dragons starter set is a 16. Very good. Thank you so much for watching. Are you a fan of Stranger Things? Have you gotten your copy of this box set yet? If so, what do you think of it? I'd love to hear your thoughts below. Also coming up this month, a lot is on my plate. The Kickstarter for the new BX Essentials is about to launch, and I've been fortunate enough to get a little sneak preview from the creator, Gavin Norman, so I'll be sharing that with you later this week. Also, after a successful Kickstarter in 2018, Frog God Games has in stock its copy of The City of Brass. I've been fortunate enough to get my hands on a PDF copy of this 5e supplement, so I will be reviewing that as well, plus many, many more good things. Please like, subscribe, and consider becoming a Patreon to support the channel. As always, my friends, may your d20 roll true, and game on. <laughs> <laughs>